Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the game which was requested by one of the subscribers and if you have, you know, any ideas for the games you would like me to comment, just leave the comment and I'm gonna consider uh, if this game is really interesting. So the game was played in 19th century in 1834 so before even Paul Morphy born and uh, and it was pretty pretty good game uh, who were the players Alexander McDonnell probably you haven't heard about that guy but he was one of the top three players in the world so uh, he was the Irish chess master he was born in even 18th century in 1798 in the uh, you know, last years of the 18th century and he was a merchant in West India Company. So definitely he had a lot of money and time to study chess. Uh, an interesting fact about Alexander MacDonald that in 1827 Captain Evans, yes, this Captain Evans who invented uh, Evans Gambit visited London and uh, he was playing a couple of games, three games, uh, against Alexander McDonnell and Captain Evans uh, used his uh, Evans Gambit that he won three games but uh, Alexander McDonnell played with the Knight's Odd so uh, he was advantage for, for Captain Evans of course they should play you know normal game we would have you know uh, really great games of the, of the Evans Gambit however a lot of players uh, from that time started to play Evans Gambit including Alexander MacDonald and his opponents uh, and also interesting fact that he died during the sixth match against Louis de la Bourdonne and sorry for my French I don't speak French at all so I'm trying my best and uh, don't laugh too much and uh, this is the opponent of Alexander MacDonald they played six matches Four of them were won by Louis de la Bourdonne and one was won by Alexander MacDonald and in the sixth match Alexander just died and he died because he had a serious uh, problem with his kidney and the medicine as you know uh, wasn't on, the, on such a great level like now even he had a lot of money that he couldn't save himself so he died when he was 36 years old uh, and his opponent is also very very interesting person person Louis de la Bourdonne he was born in 1795 in Réunion uh, it's the island in Indian Ocean and what did he do or what his parents did there actually his grandfather was the officer in the East India Company ship uh, and once uh, he also made some fortune and once he got older he became the governor of Mauritius and Réunion uh, so this is why his grandson also born in Reunion. However, young Louis wanted to, to travel to Europe. Uh, he traveled to, to Paris and of course uh, he started to play chess. And if you want to be good in chess, where you have to play and learn? In Café de la Regence, legendary cafe where, you know, most of the top players of the world, of course, played. Uh, and about Louis, he actually lost all his fortune uh, on some ill-advised land deals. So he lost the money uh, and he had to give the chess lessons for a living. So uh, imagine you have a lot of money, so you have time uh, to enjoy chess, to learn chess, to study chess. And then when you lose everything, you still can give some lessons. But of course, uh, that's just, you know, barely enough for living. Uh, then he moved to London for, for a while and over there they play against uh, Alexander MacDonnell and he died just six years later uh, in 1840 penniless. He had completely no money and all his creditors, they, they wanted him to sell everything including his clothes. So he had completely nothing and then he died when he was just 45 years old. And one of his chess friends uh, actually arranged to have him buried just a stone's throw away from his old rival Alexander MacDonald in London's Kensal Green Cemetery. So if you are in London, uh, you can actually visit their graves. Now, about these matches, they played all together 85 games. 45, so nearly 50%, were won by Louis de la Bourdonnais. So he just uh, proved that he is the best in the world at that time. Uh, 
he lost 27 games so Alexander McDonald definitely was one of the top players of the era as well uh, actually according to the to the some some website he was number two and they had only 13 draws so uh, Alexander McDonald according to the Edo metrics because uh, chess metrics doesn't show uh, that era he's ranking 2548 and he was as I said 36 years old and he's gonna play as white and Louis de la Bordune he's ranking 20 629 he was 39 years old at that time and he's gonna play as black so without further ado let's see what's happened on the board we have e4 by mcdonald and answer of louis c5 so sicilian defense and now knight on f3 knight on c6 d4 open variation c takes on d4 knight takes on d4 and now e5 leventhal variation uh, sometimes it's called also uh Bordone, Loventhal Bordone variation uh, because uh, Bordone was one of the first who played that variation. Uh, the idea of course is the rapid development, there is the problem d5 square. Uh, however nowadays what, what we played is knight on b5. And this is something what uh, De La Bordone didn't meet during this, this match, even uh, later, because the, the main idea was knight on c6 at that time, and it's not really great for white. Sometimes it's still played, but uh, even on top level, but it's not, you know, so popular. Uh, the, the problem is that black gonna play d5 rather easily. So this is why actually in this opening after, you know, uh, after c5, you Usually in the later games, uh, Alexander McDonald started to play f4 just to avoid all of this. He just didn't know how to answer, how to play knight on b5. Now, you know, modern theory uh, have much easier job here. We have bishop on c4, so fighting for the d5 square, knight on f6. Uh, and now queen on e2 is the one of the main ideas here in nowadays in the 21st century. Castle also is playable, but it's mostly better for black. Knight on c3 gives some chances for white. Uh, however, here we have bishop on g5. Something, uh, this move was completely forgotten. It's not the, really the greatest. It's pinned for the, the knight for a moment, but after bishop on e7 is of course unpinned. We have queen on e2 and now d5. So as you see, d5 is uh, you know pretty easy to play. Uh, and now... Uh, e takes on d5, c takes on d5 of course can be played, however the question is if white can actually take on e5, is it possible? The bishop is under attack, so bishop have to be moved. If bishop on b5, so you see probably uh, already bishop d7, and now this pawn gonna be protected, so no problem. Uh, and if bishop on b3, then it's also uh, not possible. However, uh, black of course can defend the pawn, but also can play castle, okay? Uh, and if white would dare to take on e5 that would end up very very badly bishop on d6 attacking the queen then rook on e8 and the king is still in the center so definitely very very bad idea so we have bishop on f6 by mcdonald and now bishop on f6 as well uh, we have bishop on b3 as the bishop was under attack uh, we have castle we have castle uh, and now a5 with the idea of a4 but there is also one very important threat here bishop a6 and this is very serious threat so what to play now the engine recommends a very very engine line rook on d1 and then after a4 bishop on c4 as this pawn is pinned because of the queen and after for example bishop on b7 knight c3 as this this pawn is still pinned so d4 now b3 let's say uh, just to not let this knight going back you know to to b1 so so for example a3 and knight on a4 so the knight can stay here and this position is like you know modern position 21st century more like you know stockfish one however we have 19th century so something else was played we have e takes on d5 c takes on d5 and now rook on d1 avoiding this skewer uh, and now d4 as the pawn was attacked of course twice uh, 
we have C4. So McDonnell uh, doesn't even bother to set up the blockade of the pawns uh, because, you know, Aaron Nimtsovich, who wrote my system and he explained how to put the blockade, uh, you know, he published his book just nearly 100 years later. So uh, in beginning of the 19th century, definitely that was not the idea. But C4 creating the past pawn, why not? We have one past pawn here and one past pawn here. Which past pawn is, you know, better? Uh, we will see. Time will tell. Queen on b6 and now bishop on c2. Bishop on c2, pretty sneaky move uh, because this actually, you know, uh, allow black to take the pawn. But would you take the pawn on b2? The problem is if you take it, you're gonna lose the queen, okay? Uh, this is the check and you're gonna lose the queen. You could try to play something like g6, this is okay, but bishop on e4 and you have to move your rook uh, and this bishop actually maybe not controls, but doesn't let black to control this longest diagonal. So we have bishop on b7 first and now black controls this diagonal. Uh, we have knight on d2, so uh, developing the pieces and here queen on b2 still doesn't work, okay? Still doesn't work. It's actually a queen on d3, very serious mating threat. So something has to be played. One of the idea is uh, to move the pawn on e4. This is the one idea, but also g6 is playable. g6 is playable and after rook a on b1, only then a4. Uh, the point is you can win the, the bishop, but actually not uh, because if you play, uh, for example, rook on b2, e takes on d3, you actually uh, losing. d takes on c2, rook c1, and now d3, and these pawns are unstoppable. So not possible. Probably you would have to play bishop on d3, and after bishop on c6. As you see, black has the pair of bishops, and, and that's all. White have more active pieces. So actually, this is this is some equal game. Uh, so not this, this way, but after e4, better to play knight on e4. Uh, and after bishop on e4, four uh, rook on b2 uh, bishop on d3 bishop on d3 so very similar position but the players have only one bishop each and they are not even you know dark square bishop light square bishop so this is pretty drawish so actually if you take on b2 you achieve nothing so we have rook a on e8 supporting the pawn which gonna march and another rook gonna support the f pawn that is the idea that's the plan we have knight on e4 now blocking the the pawns uh, and now bishop on d8 the bishop was under attack but also now preparing f5 and the game starts to be very very interesting so first c5 attacking the queen but also creating very nice outpost for the knight so uh, black have to move queen on c6 and now this outpost of course is not possible to execute because we have this beautiful battery pointing on g2 so that would be a checkmate so f3 first now creating the the anti-battery you know defense uh, and now we have bishop on e7 controlling d6 so it's not so easy to actually jump to d6 we have rook a on c1 and now this pawn is at under attack twice but for the same reason like before of course it cannot be taken because that would be disaster the, the queen would be under attack and that the game would be lost. So uh, instead we have f5 as planned and now queen on c4. This is the problem with moves like f5 because the king, uh, you know, is on the open diagonal. And what to play as black? Uh, black have a choice. Queen on d5 is not really strong because actually white can exchange the, the queens uh, and after bishop on b3, a black will be, you know, forced actually to exchange uh, and then move the, the king on h8 anyway. Uh, and now knight on d6 can jump to d6. Uh, and after bishop on d6, it looks like everything great for, for black. However, what to play next? Uh, rook on d8 the problem is f4 undermining the center and now this beautiful pawns not gonna be beautiful anymore uh because if you push e4 if you take on f4 uh this pawn gonna fall so that's the problem so after rook on d6 f takes on e5 and uh, 
and this is that just you know white have a slightly better position this pawn can be supported by the by the bishop also the rooks are are pretty active here uh, also uh, white can create the passed pawn on the on the queen side so it's a really great position for for white so king on h8 was played and here actually what white should play alexander mcdonald should play is knight on d6 knight on d6 and now after bishop on d6 only then bishop a4 okay bishop a4 make this beautiful skewer uh, so yes black can win this pawn that's possible and after queen on c5 bishop on c5 take bishop on e8 but after bishop on b6 this pair of bishop is you know pretty pretty strong uh white can actually try to deflect one of the bishops uh but this bishop can avoid that and uh, black have you know exchange down they are exchange down however this bishop can help this pawn to to advance so uh it's not so much good for white actually it's slightly better for black even you know uh down the exchange uh, however alexander mcdonald immediately immediately play bishop on a4 uh, skewering the the queen so what to play now D there is only one move for black which is not losing so feel free to pause the video and find you know the move which keep black with the initiative uh, while i enjoy my cup of tea <clears throat> okay ready so the only move really only move the the other moves just just losing uh queen on h6 queen on h6 with the idea of you know moving the the queen to e3 and start to create the attack and this is you know really a lot of initiative now what to play as white uh, this was played by louise de la bordonnet and what to play as white seems like white can try uh, some more passive move like you know knight on f2 uh, and the position would be quite difficult but still playable so for example rook on c8 and now c6 bishop on a8 and the game can continue this way okay uh, this is very solid pawn uh black have very solid center so everything can happen uh, and this knight actually defends from from tempo on e3 so uh it's it's a pretty okay position but of course still slightly better for for black but this was the only uh, way to play knight on f2 probably the best way however we have bishop on e8 immediately uh, and now black doesn't even bother to take the the bishop or play anything else the only correct move in this position if is f takes on e4 and this was played by louis uh, we have c6 now attacking this bishop the problem is this move does nothing this move just does nothing because uh <coughs> black just take on f3 the problem is you even cannot take on b7 if you try to take on b7 the problem is queen on e3 with tempo and now after king on h1 f takes on g2 the rook is joining so that's actually a checkmate and you cannot do anything about that okay this is just a uh, checkmate so uh, not this way uh, however seems like rook on f1 is the strongest move in this position because now after queen on e3 king h1 there is nothing more here okay king g2 and now uh black doesn't have anything in this attack okay uh, rook on e8 c takes on b7 and it's still playable you know uh for white as well uh of course the, the king is exposed but this this pawn is a uh, pretty pretty active and also white have uh, extra exchange however we have a rook on c2 which is also not so bad move but it's losing it's losing but only in era of of stockfish and it's very difficult to find uh, the winning move for black but if you dare to challenge you know uh, and try to find the move i'm telling you that this is just uh, very difficult but you can try and uh, you can pause the video while i enjoy my cup of tea for the second time <clears throat> ready so the only move really the only move winning here is actually bishop on a6 
bishop on a6 and it's very difficult to spot first of course is deflecting the queen from defending c5 c5 is the key square here and the problem is the rook also defends so it's not so clear how to find that but the idea is after queen on a6 play e4 and now these three pawns are just deadly so for example g takes on f3 but then d3 attacking the rook this rook have to be moved if staying on this file somewhere uh, then queen on e3 is deadly it's just it's just mating idea so rook on g2 uh, and then e takes on f3 a rook on g3 the, the only move because the bishop controls c5 so you even cannot move the rook to block on f2 uh, and after bishop on h4 your rook is trapped if you try rook h3 then queen on g5 and actually this is this is made, made already you see this is mate checkmate so a rook on g3 but bishop on g3 you even cannot take the bishop because the same checkmate is coming so you achieve nothing and you just lost the rook so uh <coughs> queen on d3 would have to be played and after bishop on g3 h takes on g3 queen on h3 this is winning for black but it's not easy to 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 you know to find the, the way because after rook on d2 queen g3 uh king f1 queen h3 you have to check a couple of times uh king g1 if the king goes to e file then of course we have rook on e1 with tempo so joining the 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 party there so king on g1 and then rook f4 making a lift and bringing the rook to to mating uh king have to be you know <laughs> move away so king f2 queen h2 king e3 now f2 so uh promotion is coming rook on d1 now rook on f6 rook on f6 important move now the rook is defended by the pawn uh, and now we can freely go for example queen on g1 uh, so rook on f1 first uh, but now queen on g3 and now wherever you go the rook come to d6 and <clears throat> if you if you move here you're gonna get checkmated very very easy uh, and if you move the the, the king you, you're gonna lose the queen and the game so as i said a very complicated line but bishop on a6 is the only way uh, to go however uh, Louis de la Bourdonnais play queen on e3 check uh, and this actually led white to to draw again but they have to find the only move in the position and Alexander McDonald didn't find it and this is why this game became famous so the correct move here is rook on f2 rook on f2 and now nothing works okay nothing works even the even the the trick with bishop on a6 a bishop have to be moved to c8 to to a8 uh, or even try to the, the trick with a6 but it doesn't work this time because bishop on c5 yes this is very nice uh threat here uh queen f1 queen can at actually uh, goes back to defend and now let's say d3 to make this battery alive sacrificing this pawn rook on d3 queen on g5 it all makes sense as this rook is still you know uh, pinned and now f takes on g2 can be very unpleasant the rook is coming joining the party as well but king h1 and everything is fine here okay and now f takes on g2 actually is losing believe me or not but it's losing if you play f takes on g2 then simply queen g2 and look at this you have another threat this rook is not pinned anymore so probably queen on c1 you would have to exchange all the pieces queen on f1 now rook f1 rook f1 rook on f1 king g2 rook c1 and and this is much better for white this pawn is much more advanced uh, it's supported by the bishop and it's not so easy to stop it so uh, for example rook on d8 can come uh, and then support this pawn and 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 win the game also uh, the the king is still you know very very close to the center so uh, can try to grab another pawns and and that would be disaster so uh, in this position what black would have to play it take the rook uh, and then after let's say rook on f3 rook on f3 uh, g takes on f3 bishop b6 and this is just 
and it is just a draw with the queens on the board uh, with this queen and the bishop controlling g g1 it's not so easy to move the the queen anywhere okay uh, really really very difficult for white to make any progress as this queen actually can can grab some other one or two pawns and it's it's rather a draw if one of the sides try to uh, risk then really can can lose the game so <clears throat> rook on f2 was still the way to go last chance for alexander Mac Donald to actually draw this game however we have king on h1 and this is why this game became so famous so bishop on c8 as the bishop is under attack we have bishop on c8 uh, bishop on d7 blocking this bishop otherwise this bishop can actually join um, the attack and support the the pawns but this actually led black to play f2 so now black created three passed pawns against only one pa passed pawn of white and how do you think you can actually play a little mini game and write in the comment how do you think how many pawns you know uh, gonna be lost in the battle for you know uh, reaching the promotion squares we have three past pawns how many of them you know can reach the the, the last rank or or at least the second rank uh, just leave in the comment and you can see if you were right <coughs> at the end uh, we have rook on f1 of course queen on e1 is a very very serious threat so rook on f1 blocking we have d3 now attacking this rook rook on c3 pinning the the pawn and also the pawn is attacked twice and it's pinned so something have to be done about that we have bishop on d7 c takes on d7 and now e4 supporting the pawn and here queen on c8 of course the the queen cannot be taken because that would be disaster that would be actually checkmate so bishop on d8 rook on d8 also is correct move but we have bishop on d8 and now queen on c4 so putting the pressure on d3 uh, just in case if the queen moves uh, and try to move e3 this pawn gonna be vulnerable uh, we have queen on e1 now attacking the rook for the same reason of course the queen cannot be taken uh, and now rook on c1 so defending this way but now d2 d2 so attacking the rook what to play next uh, we have queen on c5 threatening the checkmate so rook on g8 of course and now rook on d1 interesting position we have e3 and now uh, doesn't matter what white plays actually we have queen on c3 and in this position queen on d1 queen on d1 we have rook on d1 e2 and in this position alexander mcdonnell resigned the game and he resigned uh because he cannot do anything here okay we're gonna have the promotion of one of the pawns uh and that's gonna be a checkmate and if white tries to play something like h4 of course we're gonna have uh, two queens uh, and that's also enough to or maybe even three queens to to win the game so uh if you write all three pawns gonna uh gonna you know uh advance uh, to the promotions you were right that's uh, quite surprising and this is why this game is famous and in my opinion this is one of the immortal games it wasn't called officially the immortal game but look at this remarkable position it's really really impressive so uh thanks you for the suggestion very nice game and if you like this game press like if for some reason you don't like this game press unlike and if you want to see other beautiful games from the past or some tournaments from nowadays press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one